what we're doing today is working on the uh, third pane. The first one was the uh, radio buttons in the checkbox and the second one was the tree view. And in this third pane we're going to put a list view. So drag a list view over to the uh, third pane. And then click on the common task pop-ups and select dock and parent container. We want to give this a meaningful name <coughs> of LSV list details. And then we need to go down to the uh, columns collection. Click on the ellipse and bring up the uh, column header collection editor and do an add, add the first column. And I always like to do A to Z rather than have them grouped by categories. And for the text, we need to make this uh, title. Yeah, I think I spelled it right. And then give it a width of uh, 300. And then click Add again and give this uh, text of uh, location and give that a width of about 200 and then the third one is uh, genre give that a width of about 260 And then we have a small column called Scene, where we'll probably just have yes or no to indicate whether we've seen the, the DVD or not. So we can make this pretty small, just call it 40 pixels. And then for the final column header, I'm putting ID. Give that a width of about 80. And this actually isn't useful for information, but it, when you get the ID, you get an idea of when it was input. Since they start at 1 and go onward, I think I have a little over 300 now. So I thought that's pretty interesting information. And then click OK to establish all the columns. And you notice they're not actually displayed. And that's because we need to go down to the uh, view and change it from large icon to uh, details. And now we see our nice column headers. They actually look pretty close, but this is a little off, so maybe I'll move this over a bit. There we go. Okay, that should fit about right. And then click on save this and then we need to go over to the uh, tree view and this time we do want to double click on the tree view to get the default uh, um, event and the code we want to put in this uh, event handler looks like this And in order to really understand it, you need to understand the join in SQL. The join has to do with the nature of relational databases. Basically, it connects foreign keys to primary keys. And the primary keys are in what are known as the parent tables. And the foreign keys are what are known in the child tables. In the case of uh, what we're dealing with, genre and listing, are the two uh, parent tables and DVDs is the child table it has the foreign keys and you can either do this with fields that are of the same type and don't have any definition in the table when they're created so it's a sort of an implied manner or you can do it explicitly with uh, defining primary keys and foreign keys and it's a lot better to do it this way because you get what's called referential integrity. 
where you'll actually get an error if you try and delete a table that has uh, primary keys in it that are referenced by foreign keys in another table. So it helps to keep your database uh, well organized. And the actual select statement we're using is this. Uh, select d uh, dot title l dot name as location g dot name as genre d dot scene d dot dvd id from dvds d and dvds is a table name of course and d is an alias for that table name so if we look back at these field names we notice they're qualified with these aliases d dot title is synonymous with dvds dot title and when we look down further there's a join statement and it says join location L and L is an alias for the location table so we have L dot name as location which references a field within the location table or actually within the big table we're creating uh, that combines the three smaller tables <coughs> And the reason we need a field alias for this, where we say as location, is l.name and g.name would be the same value. They'd both be name. And it'd be ambiguous to try and reference them. So we have l.name as location and g.name as genre. <coughs> and within the join, we have an on statement where it says join location l on d dot location id equals l dot location id so that connects those two fields together we'll get a record where d dot location id is three and l dot location id is three so that would create one big record where we had small records before and the same thing happens with the join genre g, g where we say on d dot genre id equals g dot genre id that combines that table in to create a combined table that's actually three tables uh, melded together in what's known as a Cartesian product and then we have order by d dot title so these will be nicely ordered by the title and if we look at the table create this is a shared procedure or a stored procedure we used previously and this actually has a problem with it because I say drop table if exists location drop table if it exists genre and then I have drop table if it exists DVDs and then we have the create tables underneath and the trouble with this is we have a foreign key constraint in the DVDs table and if we try and drop this table it, once we've created data it's going to say we can't drop this because it has values that are referenced in the foreign key of this table so what we need to do is move all the drop tables up to the top and drop the DVDs table first that way we won't have dependencies and we can go ahead and drop the location and genre table so that's actually an error in the, the stored procedure it didn't matter because we were creating them for the first time but it's something I should have noticed and then you notice the genre ID is an auto increment defined as a primary key and the location ID is an auto increment defined as a primary key and then we have foreign key references to them and the DVDs table that's what makes the DVDs a child table and the genre and the location parent tables and that's how they connect are connected together to create the big table in the join so if we look at the actual code in the, the MySQL connect slash net, we have a uh, list view uh, object defined as LVI and a list view dot list view sub item defined as LVSI. And then we create a MySQL data reader called MDR. And the first thing we do is we take the uh, LSV list detail list view control that we put on the uh, screen and we use an item stock clear to totally clear that and then we create an SQL uh, statement that looks exactly like the one that we've been studying and then we create a uh, command object MySQL command 
with this SQL and our shared connection. And then we populate the uh, MySQL data reader with a command dot uh, execute reader. And what this result table looks like is what all uh, uh, XY tables in a relational database look like. We have the rows or records which there could be any number depending on how many are in the database. And th these are shown as numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we have our fields going out on the Y dimension A, B, C, D. And of course in this case we just have A and B if it's the genre table for genre ID and uh, and genre name or in the case of the join table we have quite a few more fields more than four actually so the while loop does a MDR dot read which goes through each of these records individually and once we've uh, looked we're looking at record one two three four and so on we use the uh, list view item to do uh, LVI equals new list view item and we reference the uh, actual field within the record via MDR square bracket quotation mark title quotation mark square bracket so that'll get the title field and we convert it to string and we trim it to get rid of any uh, extra white spaces and put that in the text field and the text field of the uh, list view item is like the main field, everything else is sort of tacked on. So now we do a LVSI to create a list view item, list view sub item, which gets attached to the main list view item. And we assign the text to that to location, and once again to string and trimmed. And then we use an LVI.subitems.add to connect this in to the, the LVI record we're building and do the same thing with the genre field and with the scene field instead of directly uh, adding it we check we convert it to a boolean and check if it's true and make the text of the list view item sub view item equal to yes and if it's false we make the uh, list view item sub view item equal to no and then add that sub item to the main list view and finally we do the uh, DVD ID field and do the sub items add on that and once we have built the entire record then we take the uh, control that we dragged over the LSV list detail and do an items dot add of that uh, list view item so that creates one row and then we go through with the read and continue to add rows till we finish all the rows in the database. And of course we have this within a try catch block so that it, if the SQL works this code runs and if it doesn't we get a MySQL exception EX that pops up a message box that said the code failed and does a EX to string to display the actual message. And whether or not the try or the catch work we do a finally where we do an MDR close to close the MySQL data reader object. So if we compile and run this and look at the listing, if we expand the uh, list all DVDs button we get just the uh, genres. And this actually doesn't work the way we ultimately want it to work. We're just gradually building the code. So if I click on any of these items we see the list view gets it populated with all the records from the database which I think there's around uh, 300 and something now and you have the title 2012 sci-fi 01 is the location dystopia is the genre type scene yes and an ID of 52 and it goes on in this way from uh, 2012 which is first because it's numeric down to uh, Zombie Land and Zoom, which are the last records. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot, and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.